Praise the Lord and greetings to you in the master's name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, I'm Pastor Lalinda and it's nice to be here in the presence of God. Let's pray and let God to speak uh, the, from the word and uh, let all of us to be blessed by the word of God. Let's close our eyes as we pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day that you have given us. Oh, Father Lord, here we are in your presence, oh, Father Lord. As we begin, Lord, from meditating from the scripture, Holy Spirit, you take complete control. Lord, speak to us, oh, Father Lord. Speak to me, speak to all of all the congregation of oh, Father Lord. I pray that let the word bring, let the word bring healing, let the word bring deliverance, let the word bring comfort to oh, Father Lord, let the word bring correction into our lives, oh, Father Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for listening to our prayers. In Jesus' name, we pray and ask. Amen. Uh, I think a few weeks back, uh, we started with uh, the scriptures like Acts of Apostles, chapter 7, verse 55. The topic was the glory of God, uh, hoping that uh, that we will finish the, the third part today. And uh, from next week, uh, by grace of God, depending on God, to start a new message. And uh, this, this uh, thing, I think uh, we started like two weeks uh, back, Pastor uh, Manoel was preaching, then last week he had guest pastor. And uh, there was, I think it's a quite long days that uh, it took. Like, uh, but today, by grace of God, I think I was able to finish this uh, third part. Uh, we let's start uh, the scriptures like Acts of Apostles, chapter seven and verse fifty-five. And uh, we started like this: when and he, being filled uh, full of the Holy Spirit, uh, gazed into the heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. So this is the scripture that we started with: that he saw the glory of God means he is full of the Holy Spirit. He gazed into the uh, into the heaven and saw the glory of God. So we were meditating from the glory of God, how glory of God in, uh, in uh, it was manifested in uh, Isaiah's life, how it was manifested in his, uh, Moses' life, how it it was revealed in Israelites, how God delivered out of uh, Egypt and gave them everything that they needed. They, he provided the food manna as we heard from the exhortation. And uh, he, he protected them from all the uh, attacks of the enemy. He, he kept them safe, even in the wilderness. And uh, from all the troubles that they, they would have probably encountered on the way to the promised land. So in, in spite of all that, uh, God kept them safe. And uh, today, just want to continue from there. And uh, uh, let's uh, look into the life again. Let's uh, come back to the life of uh, Stephen and see how he's encountering the situation as we made it started like um, that there was a dispute uh, among the serving the widows so they chose the uh, wonderful men of god who were full of the holy spirit full of wisdom and uh, with the good witness and all so later god began to use them why because they were full of the holy spirit and uh, god started to use mightily uh, with signs and wonders among great signs and wonders uh, stephen with full of faith and power uh, did the great wonders and signs among the people. That means to say, he began to preach the gospel because he was full of the Holy Spirit. In these days, what we need is full of the Holy Spirit, full of faith, full of power uh, to take the gospel uh, in the midst of people, uh, those who are sick, those who are needy, those who need deliverance. We need to be full of power, full of the Holy Spirit, as it says, it's mentioned in the Bible. So as the Bible says, uh, uh, there are also uh, uh, some people in the synagogue because he was preaching with power, so the Aros men in the synagogue who wanted to resist uh, the, the, the work of God or resist the word uh, that he was, Stephen was preaching. And the Bible says in uh, verse 10, and they were not able to resist the wisdom and the spirit which he spoke. So the, what they did, they brought, they secretly induced men uh, to say, we have heard him speak blasphemous words against the Moses and God. That means to say that uh, he's telling that uh, he, he, he's preaching a new doctrine and um, he is going to, like Jesus is going to destroy the temple and he's going to bring the new law. And all these things, they induced uh, some people and to say it, uh, witness or say testimony against uh, Stephen. And, um, and the Bible says they were not able to resist uh, the wisdom and the, the, the spirit by which he spoke. That means the Bible is telling that you're full of the Holy Spirit. So that's why you, they were not able to resist the wisdom or the spirit that which he was full of. Even in the word of God, we read the uh, seventh chapter and verse 55. Uh, as uh, as he starts the his preaching, as he is put forth before the council and he starts his sermon. So before uh, he, 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 after before he starts his uh, 
uh, sermon like or, or explanation uh, he was put forth before the council for by ending it says in verse 51 it says you stiff necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears you always resist the holy spirit as your fathers did so do you so it's, it's ending his sermon like this that's why the bible says in verse 54 that they heard this thing they were cut in the heart and gnashed the teeth against him so that means to say he was he was fierce in his uh, message he was full of the holy spirit he was full of the wisdom but he's finishing this sermon like this you stiff necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears you always resist the holy spirit as your father did so did you so that means to say in they couldn't resist the spirit and again in his preaching also or in his addressing to the council or the congregation that is gathered he said that you always you stiff necked uncircumcised in heart uncircumcised in ears he says you always resist the holy spirit as your fathers did and as you do so that means to say in these days we should not resist the work of the holy spirit we should be full of the holy spirit we should walk in the power of the holy spirit we should be guided by the holy spirit but we should not resist the work of the holy spirit like as i was other day i was just meditating i felt oh, uh, that we should uh, we should ponder upon more and more uh, like in our lives do we resist the work of the holy spirit do you resist the word of the holy uh, word of the holy spirit or holy spirit is guiding our holy spirit is telling to us if you read the scriptures when uh, paul was preaching as he was going to a missionary Tri uh, trips uh, he says that the holy spirit said to him not to go to macedonia so that means he obeyed the voice of the holy spirit and spirit guided him where to go what to say even in the dreams uh, angel of god uh, spoke to him god said to him and bible says the holy spirit said to me that to preach our holy spirit said to me not to go so that means he was obedient as a man of god he was obedient to the voice of god and he didn't say i have a great education i learned under the feet of gamaliel and i know everything no he obeyed to the voice of god today no matter what we what positions we are holding we should never resist the work of the holy spirit or we should not be like a stiff neck people as uh, uh, stephen is mentioning you you stiff neck people uncircumcised in heart and uh, uncircumcised ears so our ears should be circumcised so that we can hear the voice of god and our heart should be circumcised so that we can ac accept what he is telling to the heart and we should not be stiff neck stiff, uh, stiff neck people is like uh, stubborn people or or uh, those who not walk walk in the humility they say uh, uh, they know everything and uh, they say they want these things to be done they are very stubborn people but when the holy spirit is talking to us we should be humble enough to receive the what the holy spirit is telling and we should not be like stiff neck people they say as your fathers were as israelites were few incidents we can ponder upon from the bible that they were stiff neck people and they were and they were un, they had uncircumcised they were uncircumcised in heart but we should always obey the voice of the holy spirit and even the bible says do not grieve the holy spirit in the book of ephesians it says do not grieve the holy spirit uh, which you, you, we are given as a seal for the day of redemption and the bible says do not quench the fire of the holy spirit so that means in these things we should we always be careful that are we uh, are we uh, quenching the fire of the holy spirit in our lives are we grieving the holy spirit we should always be careful but uh, here stephen is telling that uh, you resist the holy spirit so if we resist the, the holy spirit all these things will happen we will grieve him we will quench the fire of god so let us pray god to pray to god almighty or the ask the help of the holy spirit holy spirit guide us through every day when we wake up in the morning when we pray let us say holy spirit you guide us lord fill us afresh not that uh, last month's anointing or uh, th th three four months i was fasting i received the power of the holy spirit no 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 every now and then every now and then be filled with the holy spirit speak in tongues refresh the the the, the, the anointing which god has given to your life and uh, speak in renew the power renew the anointing that which god has given uh, uh, into your life so so we should not resist the work of the holy spirit so when we are full of the holy spirit and holy spirit will guide us and what to do what not to do what to say what not to say he will guide us in every path of our life so that is what stephen is telling that uh, that he resists the holy spirit so there he is in the council and uh, uh, everybody looking at him and saw his face as the face of an angel so he was full of god's wisdom full of god's power now his face has turned out to be like an angel so that means he was filled with the glory or the power of god 
that is what they looking like him as a angel of god okay so then the high priest said uh, are, the, are, are these things so so that's that's how he starting in the verse 2 and he said men and brethren fathers listen the god of glory appeared to father abraham when he was in mesopotamia before he dwelt in haran so that that is starting his thing starting with abraham so why he starting with abraham he is the father of faith so he starting his sermon from abraham so bible clearly says that uh, the god of uh, glory appeared to our father abraham so he is also addressing a uh, talking uh, uh, addressing to the council or to the high priest he is saying the god of glory appeared to abraham so when god of glory appears in in somebody's life as uh, past two sermons uh, part 1 and part 2 said when god of glory appears to somebody the life changes the situation changes uh, there is a total turn around in the same way the god of glory appeared in the life of abraham also if you read uh, uh genesis chapter 12 verse 1 and few verses like he appeared to him and said abraham leave your kinder leave your father's house and go to the land which i show to you and i will bless those who bless you i will curse those who curse you and make you the blessings so god when god called abraham he called with the promise he called he said go to the place which i am going to show you that means he didn't show the place but he said i will show it partially it's a land of canaan but he said he's going to show part by part as he is obedient as he is willing to go as he obey the voice of god god said that he is going to fulfill or show the promise which he has promised so the bible says so abram left everything and followed after god with the obedient with the obedience and the bible says uh, in verse 5 and god gave him no inheritance in it not even though to set his feet in it but even when abram was at no child he promised to give it to him as for a possession and to his descendants after him so what is he talking so as abraham obeyed the voice of god god has promised few things and as he began to move the bible says that uh, in verse 5 that but even when abraham had no child he promised to give it to him for a possession and to his descendants after him so when is god giving a promise even though he didn't had a child that he gave him a promise he promised when he, he didn't have a child that he is going to give this land to him and for his descendants as a possession so the god of glory is giving a promise to abraham when he is not having a child so the the the, the god of glory saw the descendants of the generation in abraham when he called and he is speaking to abraham telling that i'm going to give it to your descendants so he is not seeing the possibility or the situations that is around today uh, uh, that is surrounding uh, around abraham today but the god of glory is see your tomorrows or the tomorrows of abraham how his generations are going to multiply how the generation of abraham is going to increase how the generation uh, of abraham is going to be like stars in the sky or like a sand around the shore of the sea so he saw the possibilities today if you if you see that oh my circumstances are like this my situations are like this but god has promised me so much, such and such and such things god has said in my uh, regarding my life or my family regarding my children regarding my job regarding my business such and such things but the situation is like this or uh, everywhere there is a pandemic everywhere there is a lockdown situations everywhere the situations are worse or bad so how it is going to happen he who promised is faithful god today i want to encourage you he who promised is a faithful god so the bible says he promised when he didn't add a child so today god is not seeing oh whether you have money to buy the car money to buy that uh, thing that you desired for money to or, or, or capacity to uh, hold that position capacity to have the new job or the new positions which you are desiring for he doesn't see any of these things but when he promises something that he is going to do in your life he doesn't see the possibilities he is above the possibilities the god of glory is above the possibilities it doesn't he cannot be contained by your present situation he is above our present situation he is above above, above of, of every situations that we can handle or we can see that's why he said the he promised it to give it to him uh, and for his descendants so anything that he has promised is able to fulfill it but how did abraham react when god of glory appeared to him let's turn our bibles to romans can we read romans as it is written i have made you hmm. a father of many nations yes 
in the presence of him who he believed, mm. God who gives the life to the dead mm. and calls those things which do not exist as though they did. So in the presence of God, uh, whom he believed, even God who gives life to death and calls those things which does not exist as though they did. So Abraham believed God in such a way, even though it doesn't exist. He believed in God that uh, it, even though it doesn't exist. Uh, no, so he calls to the, sorry, he gives life to the dead and calls those things which do not exist as though they did. So God is able to call those things, even though if it is not there, he, he can call as if the things are existing. So he believed in that God. He believed in that God of glory. Today, if you believe in God of glory, he can call for the things that even though, uh, call those things which do not exist as though they did. He is able God in the glory of God or the God of glory is able to do such a wonderful and marvelous things. Next verse, it says like this. Who contrary to hope, in hope believe. Hmm so that he became the father of many nations mm. according to what was spoken yeah so shall your descendants be mm. next verse. and and not being weak in faith mm. he did not consider his own body mm. already dead since he was about a hundred years old and the deadness of sarah's womb he did not waver at the promise of god through unbelief but was strengthened in faith giving glory to God and being fully convinced that what he was promised, he was also able to perform. Amen. So the Bible says that uh, in, 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 uh, in verse 19, it says, and not being weak in faith, he did not consider his own body already dead. Okay. So the Bible says he was not being weak, and but he believed that the, uh, God can call those things which do not exist as though as they did exist. And it says he was not being weak. And the Bible says in verse 20, it says that he did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief. So that means to say he did not give place to the unbelief. He did not waver in the promises uh, at the promise of God through unbelief. So today I want you to encourage you to, to not to be weak in faith. So to not to be weak in faith, we need to hold on to his promise. So where is the promises are given? They say approximately, roughly they say there are around 3,000 uh, promises, few thousand in uh, Old Testament and 1,000 change in New Testament, just the general promises which God gave to Israel, Israelites and church and for the children of God. And some say there are, if you read uh, scripture wise and things like that, uh, there are around 30,000 promises which we can take. For every day there is a promise, do not fail 365 days. So there are many, many promises in the scriptures that which God has given to us. When we read and we meditate from the scriptures, all these promises are yes and amen uh, through Christ Jesus. That is what it says in the Second Corinthians. And in Acts of Apostles, if you read, as uh, Peter was preaching to the newly formed church, he says promises are for you and for your children, for your generations. So when you accept Christ as a personal savior, when we are, uh, when we repent and uh, we baptize in the water, and uh, when we follow his, uh, his, his words, uh, words and uh, do accordingly. Peter says, the promises are for you and for your generations. So that means to say, when we follow Jesus Christ, all the promises of Abraham or the promises which God has given uh, to his children uh, is to us will come to us. So, so the Bible says that he did not, uh, he is not being weak in faith. So faith comes by hearing the word of God. So as we read, as we meditate from the word of God, as we uh, um, ponder, as we just uh, meditate the scriptures day and night, it will give us, uh, it will make us stronger in faith. Many uh, wander away from the faith. Why? Because they are weak in faith. They don't, uh, uh, what to say, they don't meditate properly the scriptures. They don't read the scriptures. They are just uh, like... Uh, According to a Gulf language, you can say Friday Christians. Once, once in a while, Friday, they go open the Bible and go to church. We should not be Sunday Christians or Friday Christians. We should be every day meditating, every day read the scriptures, every day be strengthened in faith, every day be filled with the Holy Spirit. Every day, you should have experience of walking uh, uh, with, uh, along with God, walking with God. So the Bible says, um, and uh, in 20th verse, it said, and he did not waver at the promise of God, through unbelief. So it was not weak in faith. He did not waver in the promises of God. So in the next verse, 21st verse, it says, uh, sorry, uh, 20th verse, it says that he did not uh, waver at the promise of God, 
but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God. God of glory called him, but he was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God. So he was praising God, just thanking God for the promise, just thanking God for who he is and what he's able to do, his wonderful deeds. And by faith, he was walking and he was glorifying God in every walk of his life. Today, I want to encourage whatever God has promised, whatever God has spoken to you, walk, uh, be, uh, walk in faith, see it in faith that is, that is taking place in your life, that is happening in your life. Do not waver, do not be weak in faith, but be strengthened in faith by giving glory to God. And verse 21, and being fully convinced that, that what he had promised is able, is also able to perform. So that means to say he was strengthened in faith and is, he was convinced that what he has promised is able to, is, is also able to perform. So he had such a confidence in God, the God who has promised is able to perform also. It is not by, by my capacity. It is not by my strength. It is not by my abilities. It is by his strength. It is by his capacity. The God of glory who has promised is able to perform also. So whatever today God has promised you, even the smallest promise or the biggest promise, which is impossible. Anything that God promises, he always promises us the impossible things. The uh, all things that that are uh, possible, we can. So I that I know that it's going to happen. I know that things will take place. Uh, uh, I know it. Uh, they can say it. But God, whatever God promises, He He promises the impossible things in our life that which only He can able to perform. Today, just believe in God that He He who promised is able to perform in great and mighty things. So that is how uh, we need to walk. That is how we, he believed in the promises of God. Let's turn our Bible to 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 2, 3, and 4. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God, our Lord Jesus, as his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness, through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue, by which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises that through these you may be partakers of divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Such a powerful and such a blessed word it is. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of our Lord Jesus Christ, as his divine power has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. So that means to say, this is also a wonderful promise. When we have knowledge about our Lord and our Lord Jesus Christ. So the Bible says, he has given everything, uh, as his divine power has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Today, we are be worried how the situations are. There will be maybe joblessness or the business are not going well as you would have thought because of the situation that is around us. But the Bible says, by his divine power, has given us all things pertaining to life. We are worried about your children's education. We are worried about uh, the things that is, that is going to happen tomorrow. We are worried about the rent or worried about anything. But the, by the divine power, the Bible says, has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Whoever it may be who are watching this message or who are going to watch tomorrow, but I want to encourage by his divine power that he has given us all things that pertain to life and for godliness. Even for godliness, God has given everything, wonderful church, wonderful fellowship, wonderful brothers and sisters around. For godliness also, he has given everything. Uh, and the Bible says, through the knowledge of him, was called us by the glory and virtue. So how we are going to get all these things, how God is going to provide, the Bible clearly says, through the knowledge of him, who called us by glory. So the God of glory who called Abraham and promised him, and provided and fulfilled all the promise in the same way when we have the knowledge of, of our Lord and our Lord Jesus Christ, that he, he gives everything that uh, by, by his divine power, he gives everything that pertains to the uh, life and for godliness. How through the knowledge of him was called by his glory and virtue. So how God has called us? He has called us by his glory and virtue. The same God of glory who called Abraham, 
same god is calling called us and you who are watching this message and the bible says in verse 4 by which have you been given have been given to us exceeding great and precious promise so he has called us by the uh, was called us by glory and virtue and not only that he has given us exceeding and great promises that is what the bible says in first uh, peter uh, second peter and verse chapter 1 and verse 4 he has not only called us by glory and virtue he called us for the promise he has given the exceeding great and precious promises as he has promised abraham in the same way those who believe those who accept the lord jesus christ as a personal savior to everybody you may think oh so some 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 of people may believe oh it is only for them those who are grown in the lord those who saved 10 15 20 years back our promises are only for the uh, men of god or women of god only they say god said this and fulfilled and all no promises for every person those who believe and those who are called by our lord jesus christ today you may be one month old believer or one year old believer the promises are for you what promises the bible says is given us exceedingly great and precious promises so what promises god is able to give to you it is exceedingly great it is not just a great promise it is exceedingly such a description of the promises it is it is the description of the word that is given exceedingly great and precious promises the, the promises of god are precious in your life it is just not not a ordinary promise which god has promised to you it is precious and it is exceedingly great promises today you believe that god is able to fulfill and the bible says that through this you may be partakers of the divine nature so through this you may be the partakers of the divine nature just not only to have the promises and live however we want but to partake in the divine nature as divine nature like christ christ is our good example so to partake in our divine nature and having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust so we need to uh, uh, partakers why these promises precious promises and uh, uh, great promises that god has given to us is to partake in the divine nature the divine nature uh, that christ has had so christ is set an example uh, uh, for we can follow his footsteps if you read the uh, bible there are wonderful and many promises which god has given to his children if you read uh, just just to example few examples which we can say is matthew chapter 28 verse says behold i will be with you until the end of the days uh, of the earth so the bible jesus said i will be with you i will not leave you nor forsake you and uh, you have tribulation in this world but i have overcome the world so many promises that i will never leave you as orphans in john chapter 14 he says i will never leave you as orphans i will come to you and so many things that jesus has promised and the father god has promised holy spirit's promise is there in the scriptures and not only that if you read we can read that my god shall supply all my needs according to his riches in glory so that means paul is telling that our god our my my god our god is able to supply all your needs according to his riches and glory so that means that is also a promise i can do all things uh, through christ who strengthens me that is also again the promise of god so so many scriptures uh, my grace is sufficient to you again the promise of god there are many many precious and great promises which the bible is talking to us as we made it a scripture today one, some word uh, may strike in your heart that is your promise hold on to the promise and say god this is what you have promised to me please do this to me as you pray god is able to do so many uh, so you can fulfill the word or the promises that he has given to us but for today that as we are meditating from the glory of god part 3 uh, just as uh, let's get into the scriptures let's turn our bibles to the book of haggai chapter 2 and verse 9 haggai chapter 2 verse 9 mm. the glory of this latter temple mm. shall be greater than the former says the lord of hosts and in this place i will give peace says the lord of hosts so in this uh, portion uh, it is again talking about the glory of god so because we are meditating from the glory of god so one of the promises which god gave in the book of haggai chapter 2 and verse 9 is the glory of this latter temple shall be greater than the former 
says the Lord of hosts. And in this place, I will give you peace, says the Lord of hosts. So it is talking about the temple in the Old Testament. We can take it as a promise. But, it, but the Bible says the, the, the promise is for everybody. So this promise is physically up for the Israelites. When they build the temple, the temple was destroyed because the glory left the temple of God. Why the glory left? That's another sermon for the day. But the glory left, we can read in the book of Ezekiel, in the book of Jeremiah, it clearly says the glory departed the temple. Even uh, uh, if you read the uh, book of Daniel, a few places it says, that why the glory left the temple? People uh, wandered away from God's presence. People uh, followed after the idols. People did abomination things which God uh, uh, didn't like it. So the, the Bible says the glory left. When the glory left, he allowed the enemies to invade the temple and destroy the temple. And they took the, uh, the things, the precious things from the temple and uh, like they went into the exile. But in this place, God uh, allowed in the, in the verse 1, it says, The seventh month and the 21st day of the month, the word of the Lord came to Haggai the prophet saying, Speak now to Zerubbabel, the son of Shilzil, the governor of Judah, and Joshua, the son of Zadok, the high priest and the remnant of the people. Verse 3, Who is left among you? Who saw this temple in its former glory? And how do you see it now in comparison with it? And it's not your eyes, is your eyes has nothing. So he's telling that who has seen the former glory of the temple that when Solomon built it and so many things that happened in the temple. But the Bible says that even in the days, like he says, I will shake the nations and uh, I will shake the uh, sky, I'll shake the heaven. I'll shake the earth, I'll shake the sea and the dry land. And then it says like, then he's saying that, that I will fill this temple with the glory. And he's, he's promising that the glory of the later temple shall be the greater than the former. So in the Old Testament, we, we see the temple that was built by the stones uh, by Solomon and the glory of God came. But in the time of Jesus, he says like, he, he walks into the temple and he takes a whip and chases all the people and says, my house is called house of prayer to many nations. Even he says, destroy this temple, I will raise it in three days. That he was telling about his body. He was telling about the temple that uh, the church that is going to rise up in the three days. If you read First uh, Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 16 and 17. Can you read First uh, Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 16 and 17? Do you not know that you are the temple of God? And okay, one minute. Yeah, we'll, we'll read uh, okay, slowly. Uh, do you not know that you are the temple of the temple of God? Yeah, read it. And that the Spirit of God hmm. dwells in you. Spirit of God dwells in you. So the Bible is asking, uh, the Paul is writing to Corinthians, do you not know that uh, you are the temple of God and the Spirit of God dwells in you? Yeah. If anyone hmm. defiles the temple of God, anyone defiles the temple of God, God will destroy him. God will destroy him. Okay, if you read the uh, same uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19 and 20. Uh, so Corinthians chapter 6, 19 yeah. and 20. 19 and 20. Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? Yeah, your who body is, is the you? temple of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Who is in you? Who is in you? Yeah. Who you have from God. Who, who have, uh, yeah, from God, yeah. And you are not your own. You are not your own. For you were bought at a price. Okay. Therefore glorify God in your body. Therefore glorify God in your body. And in your spirit. And in your spirit, yeah. Which are God's. Which are God's. So the 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 glory of the form, the latter temple will be greater than the former. So in the olden Old Testament, God lived in the temple that are built by hands. Even God say, even the, the scripture says that you will not uh, stay in the, in the building that built by hands and all. But in the New Testament, that Jesus, after the death of Jesus, when the veil was torn apart, that the presence of God, that the glory of God was manifest on everybody, allowed to enter into the Holy Presence. It means the Holy Spirit is dwelling in us. The Bible clearly says that uh, you are not the temple, are you not the temple of the Holy Spirit or the Holy God. So, in the Bible says, can you read verse 14? Yes. Verse 14 of the same chapter? Same chapter. So chapter 6 and, of Corinthians. Yeah. And God both raised up the Lord. And God raised, both raised up the Lord. 
and will also raise us up by his power and also raise us up by his power yeah so then uh, verse 15 it says do you not know that your bodies are the members of christ so in that portion also is again is talking about the temple so that means to say god raised us uh, verse 14 says the lord and will raise uh, us by his power so how did god raise jesus christ from the dead how does he is going to raise us up the bible says by his power what is that power if you if you turn our bibles to romans chapter 6 verse 4 Romans chapter 6 verse 4 it is talking about the resurrection power Romans chapter 6 verse 4 it says therefore we were buried therefore we were buried with him through baptism into death with him through baptism to death so how we were buried in Christ it is through the baptism baptism is not just a sign it is burying with Christ. It is, it is immersion in the water. You are burying yourself with Christ Jesus, the old man, old uh, uh, nature, uh, old person is dying with Christ Jesus. Yeah. That just as Christ was raised from the dead. Yeah, just as Christ was raised from death. By the glory of the Father. By the glory of the Father. Understand the scripture. By the glory of the Father. So how was Jesus? Resurrected. How is going to resurrect us? Uh, resurrect us, as we read in uh, six, uh, First Corinthians chapter six and verse fourteen. By the power. What is this power? Power is mentioned the in uh, First uh, sorry Romans chapter six and verse four that he was resurrected by the glory of the Father. Father. So it is by the glory of the Father that Jesus was resurrected. So how we are going to be resurrected? It is by the same power it is by the same glory of father that we are going to be resurrected what is the glory of the father so we can uh, we can uh, see that uh, in the book of romans chapter 8 the the same spirit which raised jesus is in you it is talking about the holy spirit let's get, get back to uh, uh, romans 6 chapter 6 and verse 4 6 verse 4 therefore we were buried with him mm. Through baptism into death, mm. that just as Christ was raised from the dead, okay, by the glory of the Father, okay, even so we should walk in the newness of life. Even so, we should walk in the newness of life. And the next verse it says, For if we have been united together uh, in the likeness of his death, mm. certainly we also shall be in the likeness of his resurrection. Certainly, we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection. So what will be in the likeness of his resurrection? As we read in the Romans, it says, the same spirit which raised Jesus Christ from the dead is in you. That means the Holy Spirit, the same spirit that is in us is going to resurrect us from the power. So after the, the resurrection power is, is in us so that the things is going to happen. So the, the God is, uh, the Holy Spirit is uh, filled us with that same resurrection power. One side, the Bible says, we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Uh, we, the, the Spirit of God is in us. And he is going to raise us, uh, Jesus, with the same power. What is that power? It is the, of, of the glory of the Father, the resurrection power, the same Spirit in us. So we should walk in the newness of life that we, we are walking in the glory and we are carrying this resurrected power. So once we understand this resurrected power that is in us. So everything, everything is going to change. This is the promise that we have. The same spirit that raised Christ Jesus in us, dwells in us. So let's turn our Bible to book of Ephesians chapter 1. And verse 17. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, mm. the Father of glory. The Lord, uh, the, the Lord of our Lord, uh, sorry, the so can you repeat again? The, sure. Yeah. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ. God of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Father of glory. The Father of glory. Understand this word. The Father of glory. The Father, the Lord of glory who appear, appeared to Abraham. And he called us by glory. He called all of us by his glory. And again, by the glory, he resurrected Jesus. He, by the glory of the Father, he resurrected. He is going to resurrect us. And here it says, the, he is the Father of glory. Yeah. What is to you mm. the spirit of wisdom may give to you the spirit of wisdom 
and revelation and revelation in the knowledge of him in the knowledge of him the eyes of your understanding mm. be enlightened okay that you may know what is the hope of his calling okay what are the riches mm. of the glory of his inheritance in the saints so he's telling that the god to give the spirit of wisdom and revelation it is not just being filled with the holy spirit now we need to have the spirit of wisdom and revelation why to understand that uh, so that our eyes of understanding be enlightened that we may know the hope of his calling which are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints so to understand what are the in riches of his glory so that means to say there is a riches of the glory that uh, of his inheritance in the saints so there is riches in the glory so we should understand so to understand that inheritance to understand that riches uh, riches of that inheritance our eyes to be our spiritual eyes to be enlightened for that eyes to be enlightened our spiritual eyes to be enlightened we need to have the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him just not the worldly wisdom or not the worldly knowledge we need to have the wisdom and knowledge of revelation of him so let's uh, continue reading and what is the exceeding greatness of his power what is the exceedingly greatness of his power yeah toward us toward us to believe yeah according to the working of his mighty power yeah exceedingly greatness of his power toward us those who believe so that means to say when we believe so is exceedingly great power the great sorry the greatness of power towards us those who believe as uh, as i uh, said earlier when abraham believed or abraham was not in a week in faith he didn't waver in the promise of god so the exceedingly greatness of his power toward us those who believe so this power is manifested is exceedingly great power is manifested to those who believe the believe in the promises believe in the power of god this is the hope this is the greatness and this is the riches of his glory of, of inheritance to the saints so it is manifested to those who believe today you may say oh uh, that is not happen this is not happening but today we need to believe these things we need to believe these are there things uh, which are when we walk in the glory realm so let me continue reading uh, which scripture uh, verse 19 and what is the exceeding greatness of this power hmm. to others who believe according to the working of this mighty power okay which he worked in christ hmm. when he raised him from the dead mm. and mm. seated him at the right hand in heavenly places so he worked in christ jesus so how did he what, what did he do that which he worked in christ and raised him from the dead and seated him in the right hand of in the heavenly places yeah far above all principality far above all principality and power and might and power and might and dominion and to dominion and every name that is named not only in this age but also in that which is to come which is to come yeah amen amen the next verse and he put all things under his feet he put all things under his feet and gave to be head over all things to the church and gave sorry and gave, gave him to be him. head over all things to be the to the church so that means we are the temple we are the church so he is the head who jesus christ is the head so he is seated i mean is placed far above the principalities and dominion and above everything and the bible says that he put he put all things under his feet and gave him to be head or all things to be church verse 23 says which is his body so we are his body we are his temple so he is the head and everything is under him so that power we should understand to understand that power the the inheritance of the glory that is what it says the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints we need to pray that our spiritual eyes will be enlightened to understand the power riches of his power to those who believe so once we believe only we can understand the 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 richness of his glory so it everything is given to church so if he is the body He is the head, and we are the body, the church. So, how did Jesus walk in the glory of God? He walked in the dimension of glory. So, let's look few things. How Jesus? So, he is the head, and we are the body. 
that means we are the church we are the temple and he is the head so if you read the scriptures he is placed above all the principalities and powers and all these things so we are in christ and uh, the holy spirit is in us so we should understand the dominion the power which god has given us when we walk in the glory so how did jesus walk in the glory dimension so if you read a few scriptures we just try to say a few things and then we can pray and finish so number one in the atmosphere of glory so he walked how did jesus walk in the glory dimensions so in the atmosphere of glory miracles are normal your bill you were believing activates the glory so when jesus walked in this glory dimension or in the glory realm because he says father you are given me the glory in john chapter 17 he talks about it even um, john chapter 2 he says he manifested his glory and when he went to pray with his disciples the glory of god appeared that is what the scripture says and um, and is 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 he transfigured on the mount of transfigured his face was shining his dress was shining because he had an encounter with the glory of god the point number 1 here is in the atmosphere of glory miracles will be normal look at the life of jesus morning early morning used to pray on the mountain top used to come down somebody asked lord if you are willing make me clean he says i am willing be clean so the lame is to walk the blind is to see even one time he was even to pray there was a dispute uh, among the disciples that they were not able to cast out the demons but what did he do he just rebuked the uh, the demon and the the demon left the boy immediately so that means miracles was just normal in the life of jesus because he walked in that glory of the father in the in the glory dimension he used to spend time with the father he used to spend time in the prayer that means the miracles so that he walked under the glory the miracles were normal so that not only that the bible says by believing your believing activates the glory of god if you read a uh, gospel of john chapter 11 and verse 40 if you believe you will see the glory of god that means to say jesus believed that father is with him working and he also says in the gospel of john whatever my father is doing i will see and do it whatever my father says to do i will do it so that means to say he had that uh, that, that belief that faith in father that whatever he is showing to him to do he is doing it on this earth so that means your believing activates the glory i, I think i have few this back i said this about it that if you believe you shall see the glory of god point number 2 in the glory you will not lack in the glory your supply will come and not only that in the glow in the dimension of glory natural laws are suspended time and space becomes your servant so if best example is so let's go point uh, uh, point a of uh, this uh, sorry in second thing point a in the glory you will not lack in the glory is supply is coming to you so that means the best example is john chapter 6 and verse 11 jesus feeding the 5000 men just men is 5000 the bible says that as they had a three days of uh, prayer meeting the boy uh, had a barley bread and uh, uh, maybe stinking uh, to loss of uh, to to piece of fishes the so barley bread is always it has as a capacity to stay for a day that's it it is that cannot stay for long time but if they did ask disciples they are sitting with us for 3 days can we feed them they said even 200 dinaris is not sufficient to feed we can give little little pieces it will not be satisfied but they found out the boy with the barley bread and fish and jesus took in his hands and he gave thanks to the father and just and started to give to the disciples it, it began to multiply so that means to say in the glory realm your supply will come and you shall not lack what did he do he began to thank god father this is what we have we are thanking you for this so in the glory all the supplies can be met and not only that in the glory dimension natural laws are suspended time and space becomes your servant best example is jesus uh, turning the water into wine we all know that incident that he walked like he was invited into the wedding in the cana with along with his disciples he walked into the wedding and there there was a lack in the wine and uh, the bible says that when it was finished he said the people to fill the jars with the water and when they removed when they took the water out of the jar it's all already turned into wine 
they in the in the, those those days they used to take days many days to prepare the wine but in the glory dimension where in which jesus was was walking even in the verse 11 it says that he manifested his glory that was the first miracle which jesus did that he manifested his glory that means time and the space it was not a matter at all natural law was suspended natural law was that to become a good wine it has to it has to be fermented or it has to be kept reserved for many days or months if i'm not wrong but there when jesus manifested his glory everything was was under him so there's no need for time and space for the miracle and next thing was if you read uh, uh, matthew chapter 17 verse 24 it talks about jesus paying the tax he said to peter this peter just go put the hook matthew chapter 17 it says 24 uh that he says go and put the hook so he'll catch the first fish uh, in the first fish mouth there will be coin go and pay the taxes for yourself and for, for and for me so that means to say things are set so he knew that the first fish or i don't know in the glory you would have commanded that fish Uh, i don't know the specific fish with the coin in its mouth so that means to say in glory there will be no lack imagine fishes are plenty if you see in the discovery channels and all how they even in the lake or in the pond on the river and the sea how fishes are heavy too much uh, countless fishes are there but jesus said as you go put the hook, catch the take the first fish out of its mouth you'll find the coin that means your needs will be met when you walk under the glory realm in the dimension of glory jesus was walking in the dimension of glory in the john if you read john chapter 17 he says that father you have given me that your glory so he paid the taxes for both of them so in the same way when we walk in the glory your provisions will come your needs will be met in a miraculous way people will be surprised or you will be surprised god will surprise you how the things a worked for you how the your needs were met how uh, there was a big need how the needs are met in the glory dimension your needs will be met and that will be miracle uh, the how god works point number 3 is in the glory you will operate from the position of rest i just want to say this in the glory dimension or in the glory you will operate from the position of rest same good example is jesus If you read Mark chapter four and verse thirty-nine, disciples are going to other side. He said, "Let's go to other side." And small boats, the small boats, uh, people went uh, uh, going to other side. But the Bible says uh, Jesus was sleeping on the pillow. There was a uh, wind tossing against the boat. There was turmoil all of a sudden, and disciples were scared to death. They thought they're going to die, and they uh, woke up Jesus and telling, "Master, Master, are you not concerned that we are going to perish?" but what did jesus say he said peace be still and that's it he he was not at all concerned about the wind or the shaking of the boat or the, whether they are going to sink into the water and going to die in the glory dimension you will operate from the from rest from the position of rest so jesus if i would have been sleeping there when they woke up get up get up and i was with all confusion chaos and say, huh, what are, what are, and all these things but look at the life of jesus he was in the he operated in the position of rest he just woke up and saw there is a wind there is a waves hitting the boat he said peace be still and the bible says there was a great storm and at the moment jesus commanded it it became a great calm even in your life today any storms that is beating against your life against your family against the job let god calm it let jesus say let it be be calm when god commands it it will be calm any storm that is rising against in the unseen world we command it to be calm in the mighty name of jesus today i want to pray uh, i'm going to say things but i want to i am felt urged to pray any storm in the unseen world against your health against your finances against your job let it be calm in the name of jesus we command everything to be calm in the mighty name of jesus in jesus name somebody say amen so let there be peace and let there be calm let there be stillness 
in the mighty name of Jesus. Fourth point is in the glory, the victory is already secured. Jesus, before going to cross, he was not uh, having doubt whether uh, he is able to fulfill the accomplish the work of God or whether he is able to win the battle against the Satan and all. No, he was already secured. The victory is already secured that he's going to win that battle. He's going to overcome the cross of Calvary. Like he's going to die and he's going to resurrect. He's going to rise from death. He was secured, already secured. That's why he was praying. He's praying even in, in, in Gethsemane. He said, Father, if it is your will, but whatever is your will, let that with thy will be done accordingly. So point number five is in the dimension of glory, Things is already finished before you start. If you see, you may think that oh, it is a starting point and uh, and uh, and things how we are going to finish and all. But in the glory dimension, things are already finished before you start because the Bible says He knows our end from the beginning. God knows our end from the beginning. We may not know our end, our uh, uh, end how it is going to be, but He knows the our end from the beginning. If he has brought you to this country, he knows how to send you, how you will be shifted from this country. He knows the end from the beginning. When you have to move from this place, God knows the end from the beginning. So it's already finished before you start. 